guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. As you can tell by the title, this video is going to be going over my kit organization strategies, basically how I organize my kit and my thought process behind it. If you guys like these kind of videos where I go over my makeup kit, definitely go ahead and give me a big thumbs up as well as also subscribing to my channel if you guys have not already. Anyways, let's go ahead and get on into it here. I do wanna let you guys know that I'm not going to specifically be going over what I keep in my makeup kit. This is not a what's in my freelance makeup kit video or anything. I do have a current version version of that up on my channel. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, I can definitely link it up above for you guys. I just wanted to let you guys know how I organized this and also why I organized it the way that I did too. So hopefully it helps you guys if you guys are really looking on ways to condense and organize your makeup kit. This is my makeup backpack. It's from the brand Relavelle. This is a set style bag, meaning that it has pockets up here, but then when you flip this up, you can work directly out of the case. There's no pouches or any bags that you have to unload. I decided to put all the extra things that aren't makeup items in here. I have a wedding going on tomorrow so I just have all my touch-up kits sitting in here but then I just keep a whole bunch of extra stuff so I have like oil blotting sheets makeup remover wipes my disposables in here things like that so all I have to do when I set up for jobs is literally take everything out of this pouch and then I can just directly work out of the rest of this I like to keep paper towels on the outside it's on the side that I'm actually standing on so I can easily grab them then if you flip this up all the way this is what the inside looks like let me get the towel out of here because I usually pack a towel for jobs. I personally hate working out of bags. That's why I don't have a style bag that just has a whole bunch of pouches. I feel like you just can't see them that easily. I'd rather have all my products standing up so you can easily read everything. I did make a whole entire video over the makeup cases that I previously owned and why I decided to get rid of them. So the first thing when I took into account how I wanted to organize my kit is that I organize my kit in the way that I work. I think about what order I do makeup in. For me personally, I do the skin prep completely first, do the primer, then I do the tops of the eyes do the eyelashes and then go onto the face like for the foundation and concealer and powder and everything and then I go back to the under eye area finish that up and then I do lips last. Every artist again works in different ways but I would highly recommend you try to organize yourself in the way that you work whether it be inside your makeup kit or on your station. Seconds add up to minutes when you're working and you want to make sure that everything is super easily accessible you know where everything is just so you're not scrambling and trying to find things. These are all my sanitizers then these are the disposable that I carry that didn't fit up in the top. So these are the sponges and cotton pads that I keep. I have skincare and primers here, foundations, liquid blushes, then I have my eyelashes here. These are the only things that won't fit by my actual eye stuff. All of these are foundations and concealers. I try to keep those together. These are powders, highlighters, blushes, and bronzers in this area. Then I have brow powder and then also my lipstick palette. These two are eyeshadows. These are face powders and then these are cream contours. These are eyeshadows and eyeliners and then these are color correcting concealers right here. I I like to have all the pencil or thinner items up here just because I can easily access them. The next way I organize myself, as you guys can probably tell, is I took a label maker and labeled all of the colors on all of these containers. Nothing hardly in here is in its original container. I think that there's only a few products that are still in their original containers, but besides that, all the bigger stuff, like the foundations and everything, are in smaller jars. You don't want to make them too small to the fact that you're going to run out after like three people. You want to make them big enough that you're going to be able to do an entire wedding party or a few of them before you actually run out of product. It's really important to try to make your kit as lightweight as possible. I have these NARS Natural Radiant Foundations in my kit and as you can tell, they're very heavy glass jars and they take up a ton of room. If I had all of these in the six different shades that I do sitting in my kit, they would weigh a ton. So instead, I went ahead and depotted all of them and put them into these containers and now they are so much more handy, lightweight, and I also labeled the tops of them with a label maker so I know what all of them are. Same with these guys too. These are plastic containers and I did have them in their original packaging for a really long time. They're not glass packaging, but as you can tell, the size of them is really bulky. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and condense them because of the size. And then these guys are now in these same jars and they fit right in here. So you want to really just focus on condensing and minimizing the weight as much as you can. So get rid of all your glass packaging. Yes, it's going to take a really freaking long amount of time to do, but it's all going to be worth it. Just take a couple days out of your life, depot, condense everything. You will not regret it. Then the other thing you can think about condensing is lipsticks. So if you guys can tell, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 lipsticks in here total, and they all fit in this little palette. And I can safely go through an entire bridal party and not empty this thing, even though it may look like it. This saves a lot of space. Can you imagine having 
11 individual lipstick bullets just floating around in here. Instead, get little palettes like this. There's a ton of companies that do these magnetic palettes. These are from the Artist Kit Company, and so are these guys here. Z Palette does it. Also, Inglot has really good magnetic palettes. Makeup Forever has really good magnetic palettes. It kind of just depends whatever your preference is, but I personally like the Artist Kit Company ones. The other thing that can be condensed and depotted is false lashes. If you actually carried around all the individually wrapped packaging for the Ardell lashes, they would take up a ton of space in this kit. So what I did is I went ahead and just cut around each individual lash set and put them inside of this case. So now there's literally over probably like 30 pairs of lashes in here and all of them are different styles. So I have some of them ranging from the most natural here and then it goes all the way to the most dramatic over here. The other thing I decided to do that I probably should have mentioned first <laughs> is that instead of using the foam inserts that come with the kit, they all are kind of like this side fabric. So it gets very dirty as you can see. And that's what the individual foam dividers did in here too. It absolutely drove me nuts because literally I was always scrubbing those things. It never looked clean. I pride myself on being a really, really hygienic and clean makeup artist, as all of you probably should, but I literally like to have my stuff look clean. For instance, if there's maybe a brush that gets stained and can't get clean, even though I know it's clean, I'm not gonna be using that in my makeup kit. Other people on the outside may not know it's clean because it doesn't look like it. So I removed all the foam inserts out of the kit and put individual little plastic containers in here. A bunch of you guys always ask me where I get these containers. All of these are off of Amazon, except for this guy that's from Muji. All of these are not individually sold as separate um, containers. Like this guy, this guy, the tray that's right here, and then the one that is here all come as a set. There's also one other piece that came with it too, but it doesn't fit in this kit. So all together, these are a five piece bathroom organizer set. So you cannot buy these individually, or at least that I found on Amazon. I know that Muji carries a similar one to this guy, but I don't have a Muji store near me. So it's really not like super accessible. That's why I found mine off of Amazon. Another condensing strategy that I did is you can put everything that is like a cream or something like that into these little sample containers. I got these off of Amazon too. And I just use Gorilla Glue and glue them all together. In here, I have my prep steps. So I have eye cream, a lip mask, a lip scrub, and then this brow gel is the only thing that's kind of out of sorts here. I did the same thing, but with my eyeshadow pigments. And the other thing you can do too is you can, of course, condense all of your eyeshadows. These are what my eyeshadows look like. I have depotted these in the past, but normally to make it easier on myself now, I just buy them as singles. Then I also put all my cream contours into here. These are all the Patrick Ta duos. And then I also have like Chanel bronzers in here too. Instead of using their original containers, I basically was just trying to depot all those things just to be able to save space in my kit. Over here, I have powders and they're in these sifter containers. I used to have spray powder bottles, but they ended up getting clogged after about a year of usage. There is an option on Amazon to get ones with less holes, but to me, I kind of would just want to get out as much product as I possibly can and not have to like dink around with it on set. I did keep all of these powders in their original containers just because I feel like bronzers, blushes, and highlighters are already so thin. And then right here, I do have all my cream concealers that I got from Graftobian and they are sitting all in this container. This is a view set container. Then I also have another view set container. This guy's so many. <laughs> I have my MAC paint pots in here because normally the MAC paint pots are in these large glass jars and they are pretty heavy normally. So for the weight of four of these, I just condensed all of them and then put them into here. My other biggest tip, if you guys do have this exact same bag, you guys can tell this actually is pretty deep. Like it's about the size of my hand. If you don't have something on top of here, all these things can just roll around really easily and they can just go all over the place as soon as you tip up this bag to wear it as a backpack. So I make sure to leave my black towel over top of here. Once I fold this thing over, then usually none of this moves around or if it does, it's like very minor. But yeah, I would make sure to keep like a towel or a mat or something over top of here just so it doesn't go all over the place. Then the last thing with this bag is that I wanna point out that if you guys are really worried about condensing stuff and not bringing a lot of products with you wherever you're going, you can maybe do a little bit of research, especially if you're doing weddings. You can ask your bride what's skin tones that everybody has. So then maybe you won't have to pack as many colors of foundations. Like say everybody has like a fair to light skin tone or something, then you don't have to pack all of your darker foundations and you can unload a whole bunch of stuff out of your kit. Just kind of prepare and see what clients you have ahead of time. Then for my brush belt, I just wanted to go over this really quickly. So I personally carry the My Kitco Brush Buddy. There is a different one that you guys can get that's off of Amazon. It's a little bit cheaper, but I feel like the quality isn't as good. So I have the brush carrier here. I think it's maybe called like a caddy or a holder or something like that. But um, it's this case on the outside with this pocket. The brush buddy itself is just this inside container, but I needed extra storage space. So I went ahead and actually got the caddy for it. I just keep my 
palettes and stuff inside of here. So I have palette right here. There's a couple of palettes here. I have my spatula here, lash glue, tweezers, and also um, scissors as well. So all of those are kept really sanitary because they are PVC lined and I can clean it really easily. Then I have stuff going on in like the side pockets, just like a face mask if I need it. And then I have business cards and a brush cleaner there. With this, I organize them obviously by the style of brushes. These are foundation brushes, but you can use them for like anything. They're just denser foundation brushes. These are all face powder brushes. Then I have highlighter and primer brushes right here. Then I have my fluffy blending brushes, my eyeliner and brow brushes, and then also my concealer brushes and the lip brushes. And then the last thing that I kind of briefly covered to begin with is my disposables. I found this box off of Amazon. It's a fishing tackle box that you use for fishing lures normally, but it fits my disposables perfectly and it's a really lightweight plastic box. I feel like this is a lot more handy to have your disposables all in one box. Make sure your disposables also are in an enclosed space, like something that's sealed airtight that you can clean. I've seen some makeup artists that just kind of have their disposables sitting inside of their kit, maybe like upright or something, and they're not sealed in anything. There's a lot of bacteria from the air that can literally go onto your disposables if they're not in a sealed container. I feel like this more so just turned into a Cliff Notes version of the What's in My Freelance Makeup Kit, but I kind of just wanted to show you guys in a little bit shorter of a video how I organized my kit and why I did it the way that I did. And again, please don't just copy me exactly. I highly suggest that you organize it the way that you personally feel is necessary and how you work as an artist. There's a lot of people that ask me like, what's the best bag for your makeup kit? What's the best foundation to use on your clients? A lot of things that you guys ask me is something that you're gonna personally have to figure out yourself. It's just by trial and error. So I guess my best advice is that do what you guys need to do personally as an artist. Nobody else can really tell you guys what to have necessarily. And I know it's a really hard concept to get around because I know you guys are always concentrated on being perfect and being the best, setting yourself up in the best way possible and also saving money at the same time. Here's the thing though, you are literally going to waste a ton of money trying to find the best ways to organize yourself and also finding the products that work best for you too, guys. Please note that it is not a set in stone thing. Literally do whatever you feel like you need to do. So um, yeah, that is pretty much how I organize my kit. So again, if you guys haven't liked and haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And as always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye. Thank you.